CCTV camera IR distance. What is it and why is it misleading? Hello everyone, Tyler and Corey here and welcome to CCTV Q&A, where we answer your questions on all things CCTV video surveillance. Today's question comes from Paul C who writes, what is the maximum distance the CEBZ0 HDL and the CEBZ3 HD can see at night using IR only? That's a great question, Paul. We get this a lot. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with these cameras, he's asking about the BZ0 HDL has a 2.8 to 8 millimeter lens and four IRs, whereas the BZ3 HD uses a 5.1 to 51 millimeter lens with eight IRs. How do we determine the maximum IR range based on the lens specification and the number of L IR LEDs? Uh, those two factors alone really aren't enough to really get an accurate number on the distance. There's other things to take in consideration, such as the amount of ambient light and the overall reflectivity of the scene. Why is it that some manufacturers specify that their IR ranges from 50 feet to 100 feet if they know that that's highly you know, subjective? Really what that is, it's more of a marketing gimmick than anything. It's specmanship. So, you know, you'll have one manufacturer that'll claim their IRs go 50 feet. So to sell more cameras, another manufacturer will claim that their IRs can go 55 feet or 60 feet. So what's the best way to determine um, which IR camera to use in a location? Uh, re really a good starting point is the focal length of the lens. You really need to figure out what do you want to see with the camera. Do you want to be able to identify a person 100 feet away or are you just looking for more general area coverage? And we have a video that demonstrates different focal lengths of lenses and I highly recommend you check the video out. So what about the number of LEDs on the camera? Does that affect distance? E yes. Um, I mean obviously the old adage more is better you know, kind of is true, but you know, even here too, we have intensities. So, you know, the BZ0 HDL in this case, it has, it only has four IRs, but they're four high intensity IRs and we'll use uh, focusing lenses that control the beams of the IR spread. And really the key thing to remember here is that no matter how many IRs you put on a camera, it's not gonna let you see farther than what the camera itself can see. Uh, is there anything else we should consider? Ambient light, uh, it's a really big uh, issue here. So you could take that same camera, put it in a city, put it in a countryside, and you're gonna have you know, vast differences in what that camera can see at night. You know, obviously, a camera in the city with lots of ambient light is gonna have you know, more potential for a you know, better nighttime image as opposed to a camera that's in the countryside with you know, very little ambient light. And even, you know, the full moon, you know, if, if the moon is out here again, you're going to have lots more ambient light than if the moon wasn't out. Since you're talking about the two different locations, how does this, how do these handle reflectivity? Can you talk a little bit more on that? Yeah. So, you know, IRs are very similar to a flashlight, for example, you know, if you take a flashlight and you shine it up into the night sky, there's going to be a lot of fall off with that light and, you know, how far is it really going? You know, but if you take that flashlight and point it at a tree or a house 25 to you know, 50 feet away, you know, now you can see it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, now I'm looking at something. Well, thanks a lot, Corey. That was a lot of information. I think what we should do now is take a look at these two cameras side by side and kind of compare them and see how they stack up against each other. Yeah, let's awesome. check it out. OK, so, Corey, tell me what we're looking at here. Now I wanted to start off with comparing these two cameras in a controlled environment where ambient light won't affect the results. So here we have a large garage space that measures 100 feet to the back wall. Now let's start by looking at the BZ0 HDL. Now to me it looks like the IRs go all the way to the back wall here. Yeah, I'd agree that in this scene you are capable of easily reaching that 100 foot distance, but keep in mind you do start to see some fall off on the edges of the image. Well how about the BZ3 HD? How does that compare? Now, as expected, the BZ3 HD performs really well here. It practically illuminates the entire scene with no visible fall off and looks just as good when zoomed all the way in. So which of these two cameras would you suggest here? Well, I mean, that largely depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're looking for an entry level IR camera for good general area coverage, then I'd say the BZ0 HDL would be a good choice. But 
if you need to be able to identify someone at a distance, then the BZ3HD is going to be the better option. Now here I wanted this next scene to be more real world, so I chose a residential application where someone might want to monitor a shed on the back of their property. So it looks like the BZ0 HDL is capable of 100 feet and maybe even further here. Well, technically, yeah, you might be able to get 100 feet or further here. This isn't really a normal angle that a security camera would be installed in. You know, typically security cameras are installed with a slight downward angle, and this does affect the IR distance. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that that would affect the IR distance that much. So now maybe only 75 feet here. Yeah, I'd, I'd say at this height and this angle, 75 feet might really be about the max distance you're going to get. But, you know, what are you really able to identify at this distance? You know, yes, you can tell it's a person and yes, you could zoom into that area. But ultimately, you're really going to struggle to provide more details about this person. So how does the BZ3HD look at this 75 feet distance? If we look at the BZ3HD at that 75 foot distance, you're able to see important details such as this person is a male, he's wearing a beanie, and he has a beard. Well, what about the maximum IR distance of the BZ3HD? Now, I, I suppose you could say it's maybe 200 feet based off of the driveway entrance in the background, or you could say it's capable of 325 feet based on the fact that you can see mailbox numbers here reflecting the IR LEDs from the camera. But I see a house and a van in the background. Wouldn't you say that you could see those two? Technically, yes, you can see them, but that's not really because of the IR LEDs on the camera. It's more because of the ambient light from the house lights. So are you recommending the BZ3 HD for this application? I mean, as, as we talked about in the previous scene, it just really depends on what you're trying to do with your cameras. You know, if you had some more ambient light and, you know, maybe you're on a tighter budget, the BZ0 HDL is going to be a good camera for you. You know, but if you do need to see further, you know, obviously that BZ3HD is going to be the better of the two options. So in this last scene, I wanted to show how these two cameras perform in an area with lots of ambient light. A couple things to note in this scene is there's a stop sign 165 feet away and a truck two parking lots over 275 feet away. Yeah, I really see that the BZ0 HDL shines here. Uh, how far do you think that the IRs are actually going? It's, it's really hard to say what the IR distance is on the BZ0. You know, compared to the previous scenes we looked at, obviously it's more than 75 feet, but because the IRs are reflecting off the stop sign here, do you say IR distance is 165 feet? There's just so much ambient light, it's really hard to say. But, you know, again, if you're trying to view details in the distance, then the BZ3 HD would be the better camera. Well, wow, I think that was a huge difference between these two cameras. Thanks for demonstrating, Corey. Yeah, I mean, as you saw from the different examples there, there's really no black and white distance label that you can slap on a camera. There's a lot of different things to take into consideration. Well, Paul, we hope that answered your question. If you have a CCTV question that you would like answered, please leave it in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. I'm Tyler. I'm Corey. And we'll, and we'll see, see you next time. time. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Make sure you check out some of these other videos here on the side and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment and share your thoughts on this video. We greatly appreciate it and we hope to see you next time. Take care.